On behalf of Axis Capital, I would like to welcome you all for the conference call of uh, Bujit Borosil Glassworks. Today we have with us the senior management of Borosil Glassworks, represented by Mr. Shiva Keruka, MD and CEO, Mr. Swadin Tadia, uh, CFO, and Mr. Rajesh Chaudhary, full-time director. Without much ado, I would like to hand over to the call to Mr. Keruka for his opening comments, post which we will open the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Thanks. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is just uh, a call in between our two board meetings, I guess. We had an important announcement we made yesterday. Uh, two main points I want to cover. I'll be quite brief, and then I'll open it up for questions. Uh, point number one is that uh, the board yesterday approved uh, a bonus issue of three to one of Borussia Glassworks Limited shares. And uh, the second point is that uh, the board has also uh, withdrawn the earlier scheme of amalgamation uh, and uh, has approved filing a new scheme of amalgamation uh, that, uh, where we will have three companies, that namely Fennel Investments, Vyline Glassworks, and Gujarat Borussil which merge into Borussil Glassworks Limited, and then the scientific products business and the consumer products business of Borussil Glassworks demerges into Hopewell Tableware Limited. The Hopewell Tableware's name is proposed to be changed to Borussil Limited, and Borussil Glassworks Limited name, which will then house the solar glass business, will be changed to Borussil Renewables Limited. So this uh, scheme has been approved uh, yesterday by the board. Uh, PwC was our advisor on this scheme and valuation was done by a third party called SSPA as well as the fairness uh, valuation report was given by Keynote. Uh, that's just in brief uh, the scheme that we uh, announced yesterday and we'll be applying. It will take about 10 to 12 months in our estimate uh, for the various regulatory approvals to come in and for the scheme to become effective. Um, now I would like to just open it up for questions that anyone may have. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, please press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question key assembles. Participants, in order to ask a question, you may please press star and one. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Ankit Kedia from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. So what happened between the previous scheme, which was in NCLTA, and now, you know, what transpired uh, that we are now going with this scheme? Yeah, uh, this is a good question. Actually, uh, firstly, I just wanted to also mention to everyone that we have a note which we have uh, up, which we have sent to most people and uploaded on the BSC and NSE websites earlier today, which gives a little bit more background than what I shared earlier, uh, which one can read through. Uh, to answer your question specifically, when we had announced the scheme first, it's taken almost uh, is much much longer. It's been a one and a half years, uh, taken much longer than anticipated for the scheme to go through. And that's primarily, in our opinion, because there has been a lot of uh, backlog of cases at NCLT. And, uh, you know, the, uh, you, the dates keep coming and going and new dates keep coming for whatever reason, you know, NCLT, NCLT has. I believe from reading the papers, they have lots of uh, cases which are much larger than us to handle. Um, so, well, in the interim, what has been happening is uh, in all our investor discussions, we have been, uh, you know, interacting with uh, many of you who have said that in at the current moment, if somebody invests in Borussil Glassworks Limited, they get uh, shares of Gujarat Borussil because Gujarat Borussil is a subsidiary. And they would like to have the opportunity to invest in the consumer business separately as well as the, uh, the solar business separately. So, this has come repeatedly many times in this. 
also uh, so we decided to amend the scheme or rather to withdraw the old scheme and put in a new scheme which will allow investors who want to invest in borosil glassworks to invest in borosil in the consumer business and who want to invest in solar business to invest in the solar business all the benefits of the previous scheme which is elimination of cross holding you know related party transactions all of those have been retained so the scheme is let's call it a, a more value added scheme than the previous one and that's the reason. and since the old scheme was taking time to get approved we figured that we should withdraw that and put this one through so this in my sense is a very positive move uh, from you know from an investor's perspective from all perspectives and uh, it shows that we you know we we have heard what feedback we have received and we have actually implemented it sure uh and sir uh, you know the press note also says that to the extent of 125 crores required for expansion of solar business would be kept in this company so yes. how would the how would the cash moved in the new company which borosil glasswork has and would the fund raising needed for the solar business continue to be there or they'll be fully funded now so the uh, borosil has about 265 crores of cash at the moment uh, borosil glasswork limited out of that 140 crores will move into htpl uh, along with all, like i said the consumer business and the scientific business uh, 125 will be left behind in borosil glasswork limited which is then borosil renewables and that cash will be used as the con- the equity let's say contribution of the company towards the solar project the balance funding will be raised by way of debt and we will not be doing any further fundraising activity at the present moment uh, for the solar project in fact we have a we have a strong confidence in that uh, project you know we are the only producers of uh, solar glass in in uh, in india and uh, we already imports into india are almost two and a half three times our current production uh, our customers are very satisfied with our product we have you know a lot of r and d capability Uh, we have been cost competitive with the chinese with various innovations we have done including 2 mm glass so the uh, the management felt that the time was now to invest into this business and in fact the project uh, uh, execution has already started we expect production to commence uh, by the early second quarter next year sure uh, and sir uh, how will be the promoter shareholding now post this restructuring in both the companies uh after this uh promoters will hold 70.5% in both the companies sure and sir uh, on the listing of the hopeful uh, entity which will be renamed uh, when can we expect that yeah so uh, as a part of the scheme once the uh, business demerges the consumer and scientific products business demerge uh, then at that stage uh, we will apply for the listing and as per our uh, estimates it will take up to 2 months to get that uh, uh, listing to happen so i think once the scheme is approved through all the regulatory authorities it may take say 9 to 11 months for that approval to happen once that approval happens then the delisting process will happen which will take another oh, sorry sorry you're not delisting my my mistake the listing process will happen which will take or oh, oh, well which will take 2 months uh, uh, to to happen so this scheme would also need to go through nclt Yes, it would. So again, it would take the same time what the previous scheme was going to take. Probably there, there the file would have moved much ahead where earnings was there. Now we'll be again behind in the queue. So this might take a longer time. Uh, you're right. Uh, that is a, that uh, could happen. It's not in our control, NCLT. But uh, we will try our best to get this done as quickly as possible. And uh, in my view, uh, this is a let's say a better scheme than the one before because it accomplishes everything that the previous scheme was supposed to accomplish. Plus, also accomplishes the uh, you know separation of the two companies uh, for the future. So I think uh, in in light of all these facts, the the board of both the companies has. uh you know has decided that even at the cost of uh, delay it's worth uh, the the doing this particular process sure thank you so much sir thank you the next question is from the line of navin bothra for an individual investor please go ahead hello hello yes please congratulations sir for great startup uh, scheme thank you uh, as you already said that hum to anshi mazak mein ye kahenge ek teer se bahut se nisan jo investor ke liye faydemand hai thank you sir ha ji to 
मेरा पहला क्वेश्चन है कि आज जो हम गुजरात बोरोसिल में सौ शहर हैं और बोरोसिल में सौ शहर हैं तो कितने कितने शहर हो जाएंगे इसकी क्लैरिटी आप दे पाएंगे जरूर मैं दूंगा अगर आपके पास बोरोसिल ग्लास हाउस लिमिटेड में सौ शहर हैं बोनस में आपको तीन सौ शहर मिलेंगे और तो वो चार सौ हो जाएंगे और गुजरात बोरोसिल के सौ शहर में आपको पचास शहर मिलेंगे बोरोसिल ग्लास वर्क्स के तो वो साढ़े चार सौ शेयर हो जाएंगे ये पहले स्टेज में फिर जब डी मर्जर होगा तो आपको साढ़े चार सौ और शेयर मिलेंगे एच के तो आपके पास बोरसिल ग्लास वर्क्स लिमिटेड के साढ़े चार सौ शेयर विच विल उसका नाम बोरसिल रिन्यूबल्स हो जाएगा और एच के साढ़े चार सौ शेयर उसका नाम बोरसिल लिमिटेड हो जाएगा मतलब ये जो नाम मैं कह रहा हूं इट डिपेंड्स आर को हम, हमें पर, हम, हमें परमिशन लेना पड़ेगा वो नाम को चेंज करने के लिए वो हमारे हिसाब से हो जाएगा लेकिन आपको तो आपको बोरसिल लिमिटेड में भी साढ़े चार सौ शेयर हो जाएंगे और बोरसिल ग्लास वर्क्स मतलब बोरसिल रिन्यूबल्स में भी साढ़े चार सौ शेयर हो जाएंगे फोर फिफ्टी हो जाएंगे तो दोनों दोनों कंपनियां लिस्टेड हो जाएगी हाँ और वो एक दो महीने लगेंगे एस को लिस्ट होने में लेकिन दोनों कंपनियां लिस्ट हो जाएंगी एस टी पी एल मीन्स ओरिजिनल डिश बोरसिल ग्लास वर्क्स लिमिटेड नो हाँ एस टी पी एल विल बी रीनेम बोरसिल लिमिटेड एंड इट विल हैव द बिजनेस ऑफ कंज्यूमर एंड साइंटिफिक प्रोडक्ट साइंटिफिक एज वेल एज दी इन्वेस्टमेंट रियल स्टेट कैश एंड ऑल दिस थिंग एग्जैक्टली मदर कंपनी मदर कंपनी विल रिमेन दी सेम यस हाँ राइट एंड मदर कंपनी विल बी कॉल्ड बोरसिल रिन्यूबल लिमिटेड and it actually will not be mother company anymore it will be two separate it will be there will be brother companies there will be two separate companies uh, and that will have only the solar business so uh, in effect directly uh, promoters will hold 70.5 in both the companies that's right that's right sir exactly. in, indirectly any holding will be there of promoters no 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 directly 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 so you have sacrificed 2 and 1/2% in both the companies so uh, i want to specify to the promoters right now include borosil glass works limited as a promoter of gujarat borosil limited so in the future borosil will not no longer be a promoter the promoters will only be the uh, the the individuals who are promoters so yeah. as a group yes promoter shareholding from uh, has been come down which has already been mentioned in the uh, in the scheme which has uh, in the in the so, clarification which i shared today directly the, and indirectly uh, you have sacrificed around 2 to 2 and a half percent in both the companies as a as a promoter again i want to specify the promoter holding has come down when i when i say you i'm not sure what you mean by you but the family holding uh, i have to I have to get the exact numbers we'll have to check that but overall i would say the the public share holding has gone up from 20 25% in gbl to 29.5% and 27 odd percent in borosil to 29.5% that is what has happened so the public base has increased no doubt about it yes yes so that's why all the earlier schemes you said that simplification rp related party and conflict of interest is gone plus the minority interest has gone up so that is a very great scheme because all the promoters take more shares i will not specify but you have sacrificed them to 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 half and percent we are we are trying to uh, do things in the best interest of all stakeholders so i hope that so we 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 value these uh, thanks very much in borosil group thank you sir yeah and the second uh, question is regarding the total capital structure after the complete scheme goes through in both the companies if you can specify mr uh, 11.4 crores will be the total capital on uh, each company will have 11.4 crores of uh, capital of uh, rupees 1 each yes of rupees 1 each that's right one is that is after the bonus and after the demerger is completed yes yes final capital will be 11.4 and in 11.4 that's right that's right uh, and the yes, employees uh, this esop will remain the same employees esop will be amended to the uh, to uh, to uh, the, the employees which get the benefit of the of the scheme yes the scheme in gujarat borosil also we have implemented esop through this scheme We are going to do the ESOP. Uh, we have uh, authorized an ESOP, but we have not yet uh, implemented it. Yes, yes. In Borussia, we have implemented the ESOP. Yes. And one more question, if I can ask about the AGM date of both the companies, you have not announced. I think it was uh, announced yesterday. Let me just check one second. Okay.
आपके आई कैन डबल चेक आई एम शॉर्ट वॉज अनाउंस बट इट इज ट्वेंटी फोर्थ जुलाई फॉर बोरोसिल ग्लास वॉक्स लिमिटेड एंड एथ ऑगस्ट फॉर गुजरात बोरोसिल लिमिटेड ट्वेंटी फोर्थ जुलाई यस सर ओके आई हैव टू कैंसिल माई बेंगलोर प्रोग्राम we welcome you sir to meet you to meet you because i have not met you once <laughs> yes sir so i i will once again come on the queue thank you thank you thank you very much sir thank you the next question is from the line of gitika gupta from first voyager please go ahead hi i have a couple of questions on the opelware segment which you entered about 2 years back with the acquisition of uh, hopel uh, so firstly where are you in terms of the revenue and the margins and how are you seeing this business evolve over time um okay so actually this call was mainly meant for uh, the scheme the you know the new scheme and the bonus but i can answer your question briefly uh, we bought the company 2 years ago which had a turnover at that time of about 48 crores if i'm not if i'm not mistaken and last year we uh, did about 100 crores so we doubled our revenues over there uh, the company was making a pretty substantial loss uh, which has uh, reduced uh, and in fact we were ebitda positive uh, last year with about a 7% ebitda margin uh, we invested about uh, 70 odd crores last year in upgrading our uh, facility over there our uh, and improving increasing capacity as well as improving efficiency and i hope that this year you see a substantial benefit from that in terms of increase in top line numbers as well as margin um so obviously i can't share more than that at this present moment but um, i hope that we we will see further improvement in 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 revenue growth as well as ebitda in the from starting from the first quarter itself okay so i have a couple we are very bullish we are very bullish on that business okay is it because currently you are at i think in single digit margins is there a lot of operating leverage in the business uh, uh, no i there was a lot of operating inefficiencies which we hope to have uh, resolved with the upgradation of our plant yeah. so uh, of course being a production business there is definitely operating leverage uh, which will also kick in but uh, it's also to do with uh, improving our uh, throughput in the plant we we have some old machines which we have uh, replaced with uh, you know much newer technology much better technology in our view okay i have one last question on this business if i can uh, push that in uh, you know so the how are you seeing the industry because i think uh, till 2 3 years back it's been largely a one player market and now uh, yourself and i think couple of other players are entering the market so how are you seeing the industry evolve is there enough space for everybody to grow Uh, you know opel is a opel it's a good question opel is a fantastic product because uh, it's it has many inherent advantages microwaveable it's uh, uh, it's vegetarian there's no bone ash in it it's chip resistant it looks nice it's it's light grease comes off you know all your tail ghee and all of it comes off easily so as a product category it's quite good and what we see it's replacing things like bone china and steel and melamine that's our uh, you know understanding of the market so as a category itself is growing well and we expect that growth to continue and you're absolutely right it used to be a one player market now there are at least three players in this including us and uh, you know we with our distribution and brand strength i think we should be able to gain substantial market share which we already got but we will continue gaining and the market itself is also growing uh now how long this will continue growing aggressively is 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 a good guess but i would still say we are nascent in our uh, you know in, the, in uh, as far as the total size of this market is concerned okay uh, sure uh, that's it from my end thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of dhruv bhatia from aum advisors please go ahead hi uh, just the first question you know post the amalgamation what will be the total number of shares 11.4 crores in each company 11.4 crores right or one rupee each and secondly what will happen with the preference share so you know you have taken uh, an extension for the next 3 years for the preference given from borosil to gujarat borosil and now yes. since it's getting amalgamated into uh, the you know the new entity borosil uh, renewables uh, will the and you know the preference shares stay at borosil renewables or again will uh preference shares get cancelled uh, when the merger happens uh, they get cancelled the uh, the renewal uh, the extension was taken just from the point of view that they were uh, you know uh, due on Mar- in march and we were not sure of the scheme we had, although we were trying for the scheme to be through before march uh, we were not we were not sure so that we took an extension out of abundance of caution 
but uh, in, in general, once the merger happens, uh, by default, all the shareholding, including preference shares, will get cancelled. Uh, and it's, that has always factored in the valuation of uh, both the companies. Okay, so, you know, when you give the swap ratio also for uh, every uh, one share of, Boris, uh, for, uh, every eight shares of Gujarat Borussia, you get a, a share of Borussia Glass, uh, that factors in both the 125 crores, which is going to be uh, used by Gujarat Borussia for the uh, CAPEX, as well as the 90 crores, which gets extinguished, right? That's absolutely right. That, that, that Both those points have already been factored in. So, Borussil valuation has been accordingly adjusted and Gujarat Borussil also. And just to make a point, the 1 is to 8 is before the bonus. After the bonus is 1 is to 2. Or rather, let's say 8 is to 1 has uh, become 2 is to 1. Yeah, that's so, a, Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, it's, no, simple, post, it's simple math, but I just want to clarify that. Okay. Yeah. And for the uh, amalgamation, uh, the new entity which will be for the consumer business will, yes. you know, what numbers you keep uh, sharing as well as in the presentation as well as in the call, yes. you will have a 75 to, seven, sorry, 78 odd crores of EBITDA. Is that the right way? So you have each business uh, EBITDA being given in the presentation. Yeah, you can add that up. And, I, and obviously the operating performance, uh, we hope this year will be better than the year before. So, you know, you, there will be some growth in that. So, whatever was the total EBITDA, so you have to add up the EBITDA, whatever the presentations we share on a quarterly basis, if you take the last one, which is for the whole last year, if you add up the EBITDA of Borussia Glassworks Limited, Wyline, and Hopewell, and Classpack, all of which are all shared in that presentation, uh, that, so yeah, about 75 odd crores, that is, you're right on that number, 75, 78 crores. Uh, that would be equivalent to last year's EBITDA. Obviously, this year we'll have growth and, you know, better performance, so that should increase from here. And uh, the cash of 145 crores stays with uh, Borussia, right? 140. Which it, it goes to Borussia Limited. Yeah, yeah, I mean with the pure humor business. Yeah, with the yeah, with business. That's right. That's right. Thank you. So you'll get some return on that till the time it's as cash. Once that gets deployed, then obviously that goes away. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The next question is from the line of Rishabh Parekh from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, most of my questions are answered. Just wanted to get clarification. So, uh, uh, Hopewell, Fennel, and Wyline will now be merged into the mother entity as of now, which will, on all these three entities, plus class pack, will be demerged into Hopewell, which is be 100% subsidiary, which will subsequently be renamed to Borussia, class, uh, Borussia Limited. Am I correct? Uh, no, not entirely. Uh, so, you mentioned Hopewell will be merged. Hopewell will not be merged. Wyline, yeah, Hopewell is a subsidiary. Yes, yes. Yeah, sorry. Wyline, Fennel, and GBL will be merged. Okay. Finland, Gujarat Borussia will be merged into Borussia Glassworks Limited. Right. And then the consumer business and scientific business, including class pack and including the Wyline manufacturing, which has just been merged, will mm. be merged into Hopewell Tableware Limited. So it will then be renamed, essentially. Uh, yeah. So Hopewell Tableware will then be renamed to Borussia Limited. Mm. And, the comp and the company which was, uh, where these three companies have been merged into will be renamed as Borussia Renewables Limited. So effectively, Borussia Renewables Limited will have the entire business of today's Gujarat Borussia, which is the solar business. Yes. And, and Borussia Limited will have the total business of today's Borussia Glassworks Limited. Effectively, that's what will happen. And the 265 crores of cash will be apportioned 125-140, right? Yeah, uh, one point to clarify, class pack is not being merged. Class pack, the holding of class pack, which is today in Borussia Glassworks Limited, will be transferred to the subsidiary. Yes, and you're right, the cash of 265, 140 will move into Borussia Limited, which is more than sufficient for the capex and organic inorganic expansion plans of Borussia Limited. And 125 will remain with Borussia Renewables Limited, which is more than sufficient to meet its own, uh, you know, uh, expansion plans. After this, both the companies will have to fund their own expansion mm -hmm. as individual entities, and there will be no further, in, uh, you know, transactions uh, uh, between between these two companies. And what about the small non-core assets and the real estate we have? Will that be in the in the Borussia Limited entity? Yeah, all the assets except uh, yes, all, whatever is on today on Borussia Glassworks Limited balance sheet, save mm -hmm. and except for the. Uh, holding of Gujarat Borussia. Yeah. Uh, save and except for 125 crores of 
cash. The merger to Boros is limited. Okay, thanks. I'm very clear. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumit Panchal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Um, my answer, my questions are mostly answered. So yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thanks. The next question is from the line of Vijay Ketan from Param Capital. Please go ahead. Sir, my only question is that what happens to the existing holding of Hopewell Tableware, which is uh, now into Borosil Glassware? Whether that gets cancelled or whether uh, that remains with uh, uh, the new company uh, Borosil Renewables? No, it, it gets cancelled. It gets cancelled and uh, the, the business is, comes under Borosil Limited. So the business will come under Borosil, but the business remains, uh, the Opelware business will remain with uh, Opelware Tableware. And your other scientific and consumer business will also be uh, uh, brought into this company. Yeah. Correct? Again, this, your uh, Opel will issue shares to the shareholders of uh, Borosil Glassware. Yeah, there's a mirror imaging which will happen. And all the shareholders, once the company, once these three companies merge into Borosil, there's a certain shareholder list. All that, all those shareholders will get the same one to one share of Opel also, which will then be called Borosil Limited. And okay. the company will be listed. So this shareholding which is presently held by Borosil Glassware of Opel will get cancelled. But that's, that's what right, you are saying. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Got it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sriram R from Sundaram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Now, uh, say the cost of a solar project is say 100 rupees. Now, how much would be the component of this tempered glass? No, uh, sorry, 100% is the, the cost of production of tempered glass only. No, no, no. I'm saying, say there is a oh, solar right, right. project. You're asking, okay, I got it. Yeah, so yeah, component. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. okay, glass as a percentage of the yeah. module cost is about 6%. Okay. okay? It's 6%. 6%. And the module cost as a percentage of the solar project cost is about 60%. 60%. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, glass is 6% of... 60% of the solar projects, of the, of the solar installed pro, uh, project. Yeah. And so what is the currently, what is the pricing difference between the imported uh, and your uh, product? Uh, imports about 10% lower. 10% uh, lower. Yes. So, so, so currently, uh, 2MMs are not imported, right? No, 2MM is not imported. So, 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 so basically, what is the company, uh, you know, uh, measures for the shift to happen? You're saying that the shift will happen from the current uh, to the 2mm level so what is what are you what is the plan uh, proposed plan so uh, the shift is not going to happen overnight because it's a new product which only we are producing in the world and uh, with solar the issue is that our customers have to give guarantees for module life and for that they have to do a lot of testing so this project this product has only kind of been in the market for 5 or 6 months now maybe a little less, and uh, they have all gone to various customers for testing. So these customers, uh, we've, got, uh, we've got positive test reports from quite a few of them, and we've also got first orders. But they, it will take time for them to, uh, you know, adopt this product. So I think in the first, say, in the for next couple of years, we can expect, say, 10% to 15% of our sales coming from 2 millimeter. Uh, this being conservative, obviously, aggressively, if you look, maybe 20% can come, 25% can come from 2 millimeter. Uh, I don't see much more happening in the first couple of years. Then, it, then there will be typically, uh, you know, with any new product, there's a steep curve. Uh, so the first few people to adopt it are always the it takes long. But well, once you have enough adoption, then the curve kind of uh, increases. So we expect that to happen, and that's the reason we have innovated on this particular product category. But that is still to be seen. So, so do you see this uh, being imported in near future, or uh, there is there is something signed up? At the moment, that nobody that makes two millimeters fully tempered solar glass in the world. So okay. the question of it being imported doesn't arise at the moment. Okay. Of course, things can change in the future. Okay, so that's it from mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Janesh Joshi from Prabhuda Sri Nadar. Please go ahead. 
thanks for the opportunity uh, just one question from my side uh, what is the criteria based on which uh, the cash uh, segregation of uh, 125 and 140 crores is done between both the entities Oh yeah, that's a simple uh, criteria. The the, the project, uh, you know, like I said before, we are quite bullish on the solar glass project. Uh, we believe that we are in a unique position to, uh, you know, to uh, increase our capacity. We're the first players and the only players in India. So uh, we needed 125 crores of equity for that uh, project, mm -hmm. and and 140 is more than enough for our current. Uh, and future plans for uh, organic and inorganic uh, growth in uh, the consumer business. So that was the criteria, 125 for solar and 140 for the uh, consumer business. Okay, because the reason I'm asking this question is uh, on, on the Gujarat Borosil front, we were planning to raise some equity some time back and presumably we were not able to kind of uh, raise the money and now we are funding this particular project by, uh, by the cash which is sitting on uh, Boros's books. So I just wanted to know, is there any specific share swap criteria which has been taken into consideration while assigning this cash? Or is it simply the requirement of equity portion uh, on, on that particular project, uh, which is the, uh, what should I say, uh, sole criteria for assignment of this particular cash? See, uh, just to preface my answer, I would say that we are extremely bullish on the solar project. And the uh, project required 125 crores of cash, and uh, this is simply the requirement of that particular, uh, you know, uh, project. As far as the valuation is concerned, this was clearly in, uh, this This is a part of the valuation of both the Borosil and Gujarat Borosil companies uh, before the uh, swap ratio was decided. So it's already factored that 125 crores will be here. Uh, uh, in, in, in the solar, uh, you know, for the solar project. Um, I would also like to add that in terms of the, uh, the cash of 140 crores, which is going to be in for the consumer business, in the last, uh, we did two acquisitions in the, in the past. One had an enterprise value of 90 and another had an enterprise value of roughly 40. So both the acquisitions were well within this uh, target and we are looking uh, at aggressive growth in the consumer business, but we feel that the 140 is more than sufficient to handle that. So uh, that was the just, let's say, the justification for 125 and 140. Okay. This amalgamation, will the consumer facing business own any stake in the, in the renewable business? No, they are, there will be two separate companies which out once everything is approved and done, there, there will be no further uh, linkage as far as any ownership is concerned or in a cross-holding is concerned. Oh, okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Daniel Javeri from JNC Holdings. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for taking my question. I just wanted to know that uh, have the has the valuation uh, for the group companies that the promoters uh, are merging with this business changed from the last time around? So for Y-Line and for Fennel, has the valuation that is being paid to the promoters in terms of shares changed? So, and if, uh, what was it? Before. I can I can share I can share that the uh, there's two questions you asked one is what is the valuation and the other and more important actually is the swap ratio uh, because that the it's uh, the relative valuation in the case of Byline has not changed it is uh, I think almost exactly the same and as far as Fennel is concerned the relative valuation actually reduced meaning uh, the promoters will get fewer shares than what was uh, as per the older. So meaning is the, the, the promoters will uh, will have fewer shares in the new entity than what was envisaged in the current scheme which is going to be withdrawn. Okay. Uh, so but what has happened there? Like why is there a, uh, is there the businesses? I mean I, I don't, uh, I'm not understanding why would the number of shares be less? Because in the case of Fennel, the, it's a, the evaluation has been done on a net asset value method. Uh, and uh, as far as the exact answer to that question is concerned, the, uh, the right people to ask is actually the SSPA who has, who has done the valuation. But basically, we, we, we believe that this particular scheme has to be in the best interest of the of the of all the people of all the shareholders in the business so i'm sure that uh, if you look at the numbers you'll see that the difference is only very marginal it's nothing you know very substantial so 
uh, it's really in the best interest of all the shareholders of the business, including the minority shareholders. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Sandeep Nag from Ashmore. Please go ahead. Hey, Shriver. Uh, so my question is, net-net as an existing uh, Borussia Glassworks shareholder, um, everything remains the same in terms of the businesses we own except for the 25% stake uh, in GBL and minus the 125 crore. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, well, yes. I mean, uh, everything remains the same, meaning in that the existing G uh, Borussia Glass shareholder gets a bonus and will also get shares in Gujarat Borussia or the, in, that, that, in that business as a part of the scheme. So that's a, basically what we've tried to do, Sandeep, is to, un, uh, you know, Earlier, Borussia Glassworks shareholders got ownership of Gujarat Borussia whether they liked it or they didn't. Okay, it was because of the way the companies were structured. Now, all Borussia Glassworks shareholders will have some amount of shareholding in Gujarat Borussia directly in their, you know, DMAT account or what have you, and they can take a call whether they want to continue holding those shares or not. So they, we've unlocked value which was locked uh, for for the past many years in the hands of Borussia Glassworks Limited shareholders and uh, you know they can decide what they wish to do with that value that uh, that they now have access to which is the Borussia Renewable shares which will be uh, in in the, right. in the existing ultimate account gotcha. That's right. exactly. gotcha okay thanks so much yeah. thank you the next question is from the line of Kashyap Saberi from MK Global please go ahead yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, please. Thanks, yeah, sir. I just wanted to check the pro forma balance sheet post-merger for both the companies for Gujarat Borosil, which will become Borosil Renewables. Um, is it correct that they will have about 150 crores of net worth, about 123 crores or 120 crores of debt, and about 125 crores of cash? Is that the right assumption? So, uh, that's not been finalized yet, but I can tell you that the reserves will go up by 125 crores. What? For Gujarat And the same number of performa balance sheet for uh, Borussel Glassworks won't change except uh, for the, uh, you know, that 25% state plus preference uh, capital going out and uh, 120 crores of cash. Sorry, sorry, Kashyap, I, I made a mistake. The Gujarat Borussel, uh, the, the other equity will also go up by 105 crores, uh, which is the cancellation of prep shares. Okay, so that that will also have an impact on the pro forma balance sheet. Uh, I'm at the moment. No, I, yeah, I, I'm at the moment. I don't have all the numbers with me as far as the pro forma balance sheet is concerned. So maybe it's better to discuss this at a time uh, when you know maybe in the next uh, conference call I'll, I'll be having those numbers uh, better, which I can share. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. The next question is on the line of Naveen Botra, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Continuing from the earlier, my question is regarding the approximate ROE in both the businesses, what will be the effect of ROE on both the companies as of March 2018? I can't give you exact number on ROE. I have ROCE. Uh, ROC, I think uh, currently, uh, currently Gujarat Borussia has a ROCE, return on capital employed, of uh, approximately 14%. Um, and after the new project is implemented, the additional capex should give us a ROCE of 21 to 22 percent. So blended ROCE should be 18 to 19 percent for Gujarat Borusil. Uh, for Borusil also, the ROCE, which including the investments, is uh, somewhere in the 10 to 13 percent range. That's because of two reasons. Uh, one is there's uh, there's cash on the books, and there were some non-core assets uh, for a majority of the last year. So in Borussia also, the ROC should definitely improve substantially uh, because some cash goes to Gujarat Borussia and uh, so there's a few, lesser cash on the books. We've also monetized some of the non-core assets in the last year. That will also have a positive impact this year. And also, of course, the operations of uh, the company should be improving. So I expect the operational ROC of uh, Borussia also over the next 
you know, couple of years to definitely increase and uh, improve to uh, at least 20 plus percent. 20 percent, 20 percent plus in two to yeah. three years. And I'm talking about ROCE, return on capital yes, employment, not return on investment. ROCE, because yeah. you don't take generally loans in BGWL. Yeah, that's right. So that is the question because the core ROE will be ROC more or less same. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So that will be quite good. And the second question is regarding the name change. Now the Boros glass glass glassword goes. That's so right. So how, how it will affect? Uh, uh, we, we can move to other than glass for extension of the brand. Yeah, yeah, the brand is still Borosil. The, bo the brand which you read on our products is simply saying Borosil. There's no glass yeah. mentioned on the brand. Only the company's name is Borosil Glasshouse Limited. So yes, yes. we're just changing the company name. Nothing changes with the brand. So, and we no, are also doing various different products, the, which is more than glass. So, uh, uh, more than the uh, name changes, it's symbolic. So, you can expand into uh, glass business also to extension of, for the extension of the Borosil name. Yes, exactly. That's the idea. Exactly, you're right. That's the idea. Yes, yes. And the same will go about renewable business. We will make uh, solar glass and as well as uh, some other business in renewable space. Yeah, we want, obviously, you know, our, you know, we cannot predict the future. Uh, so, we should keep ourselves, you know, fairly widely open to what are the opportunities in that market. So, uh, we see in Borosil Limited, we see us as a, as a B2C company, as a brand. And uh, we we should look at rather than look at product as glass or plastic or any anything like that. We should look at what our customer needs, and therefore uh, we, we we should get into those product categories which are required by the customer. Similarly, in Borosil Renewables, uh, we would like to look at uh, where is the value add that Borosil can do in in that category. So whether it's of course right now it's in the in production of glass in that space, but in the future if it could be in other areas, then we will definitely look into that. And so that's that the reason the area, name has kept Yeah. So that areas could be in the uh, Tesla roof type or uh, Apple phone glass because in the earlier phone calls, uh, your father, Mr. Pradeep Kheruka, said that we are not into that, but we can make, we have the capabilities. So what is the thinking? To move into module cells or uh, uh, into some other space? See, it's, it's incumbent on management of any company to always evaluate the opportunities in the sector. At this present moment, the opportunity lies in glass production and we will be doubling down our glass production capacity and we are extremely bullish on that and we will ensure that we produce the best glass in the world, okay, which we are at the lowest cost possible. And that is the one and only focus of the management today. Now, once this project is implemented, uh, depending, uh, you know, after 12 months, 18 months, depending on how things are moving in the market at that time, if we feel we need to get into modules, we may choose to get into modules. I cannot comment on that today. But yes, yes. we have the capability and the capacity to diversify into other product categories. We have successfully proven that in the case of consumer yes. as well as scientific products. And there's no reason we can't do that in the renewable space. But we would like to stay focused as a management at this present moment of time to implementing the new project as far as Borsal Renewables is. Yes, sir. that is quite appreciable, sir. And one last question is regarding the, there was a news article yesterday in the night that said that uh, uh, old plant of Gujarat Borosil, when the new plant is implemented, is going to be dismantled and will be new plant in that place. I'm not sure which news article you're referring to, sir, but I can tell you that the new plant is the second solar glass line which we are going to put up, with which, for which uh, the total capex is 235 crores. The uh, quote-unquote old plant, yeah, I think what that article may be referring to is the glass furnace. Uh, every glass furnace has a life. Uh, so our glass furnace started its life in 2010. And it may last uh, for a few more months, maybe one, maybe uh, one or two more years. After which you have to dismantle the furnace and re, uh, reline it with new refractory bricks. So everything stays the same. You, it, it's a small portion of the cost. You just take, uh, you take out the old bricks and put in the new bricks, and you start up the furnace. You have to be out of production, of course, for uh, let's say three months. But outside of that, the plant... Just like, uh, everything just everything like the Lara factory, you will be exactly. renewing the factory with latest exactly. machineries. Exactly right. Exactly right. Yes, exactly. yes, yes, yes. Thank you. So one more question, if I have your permission. Okay. Regarding that, uh, uh, that SIP division, you announced a subsidiary company on 30th March board meeting. 
So yes, that's right. What is that going to be? Yeah, so uh, like you already like we already said that we are looking at more than just glass. Uh, Borsal Technologies, which is 100% subsidiary, will be uh, looking at developing new instruments for lab, uh, for pharmaceutical labs, R&D labs, schools and college labs, which are things like shakers, stirrers, centrifuges, uh, vortex mixers. These products are small benchtop instruments that every lab uses. And uh, uh, a lot of this is coming from Europe and US, so we feel that there's an opportunity for import substitution. And uh, we have already launched a brand called LabQuest, and that uh, brand will uh, then be used to sell these new products. So we are in-housing the R&D, basically, in this company. So, so it's, a new, it's a new startup. Let's see how that works. So you will work uh, as 100%? Uh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Botra. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Radhir Barma from KSA Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Uh, I just wanted to know something. Now, when you discuss, you know, how you are planning to split it up into the renewable space and the consumer business, now can you give, throw some light on what future products you are looking at in the consumer space, which verticals you are planning to get into? Uh, so, at the moment, uh, we are in the, on the consumer space storage containers, which are uh, basically uh, trying to replace plastic in the kitchen. So, it could be glass or it could be steel storage is something that we have already launched. And we feel there's a big runway of uh, opportunity over there. And we will be focusing our efforts in that category. And on the second space, the openware category, which I spoke of earlier, which is basically servingware, uh, we feel there's a big uh, opportunity in that category. So these are the two categories that we already have launched, but there's plenty of scope for new product development and, uh, uh, you know, marketing and uh, sales initiatives to substantially grow the share of glass in both these categories. And I right. think at the present moment, we'll be focusing on that. Okay, great. great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Daniel Javeri from JNJ Holdings. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sorry. This is just a follow-up. Uh, I was confused about that example that you gave on if you own 100 shares of Borosil right now, you get another 300 shares in terms of the uh, the bonus. So that right. would be 400 shares. And then you said something about 50 shares of Gujarat Borosil. Uh, can you just give that example again? So how many shares would somebody who has 100 shares right now totally have? You would have 400 shares of both the companies. Uh, if you have 100 shares today, you, you get 300 shares as a bonus in Borosil Glass Works Limited. Uh, and so you get 400 shares of Borosil Glass Works Limited, which then uh, the consumer and scientific business demerges into Hopewell Tableware. So you also get 400 shares of Hopewell Tableware. So that, so you have 400 shares of both the companies, uh, which will then be renamed, as I've already mentioned. In that particular example, the gentleman also asked about 100 shares, that, as if he owned 100 shares of GBL, Gujarat Borosil Limited. So that's why the 450 became relevant. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, that, okay. And uh, also another thing, um, to somebody else's previous question, you know, uh, I think that was a good point that he made was that uh, what changed your mind from raising money uh, in the company to, you know, us investing into the solar business ourselves, was it to do with the fact that we were not able to get money or was it to do with the fact that things have changed and the solar business looks extremely interesting? Solar business always looked very interesting. Let's be clear on that. And we, uh, the opportunity was here and now to invest in this solar business because we are the, being the, we've, we've uh, you know, actually been the first movers uh, from 2010. So long before anyone else saw solar coming, we saw solar coming and we put up that plant. And even today, we're the only, we're in the pole position over there. So we wanted to invest money here and now. As far as raising money is concerned, it was taking a lot of time because as we all know that uh, after the budget, mid-caps were, uh, you know, a bit under stress. So the it was take, it was taking a bit of time to do that. We did not want to give up the uh, the whole position that we had in the solar business. So we decided that uh, you know we will invest immediately, and it kind of shows a confidence in that uh, business. So that was really the uh, long and short of it. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rasha Parikh from Saniji Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, Shiva, you mentioned uh, product and category expansions in Borosil uh, Glass. Can you just elaborate? Because I was, uh, you know, someone was telling me that now you get uh, uh, toasters, etc., uh, marketed by Borosil on Amazon. So is that some uh, is appliances the way you want to go as well? 
Yeah, we've also already been selling appliances for the last two years, and mm-hmm. I don't talk much of it at the moment, just because uh, it's still a small business for us, and uh, we're mm-hmm. doing certain research and development efforts in that space. So uh, as far as marketing spend is concerned, as far as uh, any production capacity is concerned, we have not invested uh, in the case of uh, appliances is concerned. So uh, uh, to be clear, what our thought process in appliances, we see a pretty uh, big market. It's hyper-competitive. So we don't want to do just a copy and paste of what many other, uh, you know, brands are doing. Uh, we're trying to differentiate the product. And as I also mentioned earlier to the gentleman, we're trying to set up our own research and development capabilities with Borsal Technologies. And in the future, uh, that can be used to, uh, you know, come up with unique appliances. So we're seeding the market. We're marketing the product, setting up uh, service centers across uh, the country to sell these appliances. And at some point when it picks up enough scale, we'll actually start deploying more uh, resources in terms of, uh, you know, money towards product development and uh, even maybe, you know, assembly in, uh, in, in India. So that's, uh, that's the long-term strategy and thought. But your, but your friend or someone, the person you're referring to is right. We're already selling appliances. And uh, is there, are there any such uh, other uh, p- product, uh, category expansions that are currently being seeded that, uh, that you know, there is less visibility on? Uh, no, that, that's the only one. As far as consumers are concerned, that's the only one. Okay. Uh, you, of course, we also are doing, I also mentioned storage, which replaces plastic, so that includes the range of steel, which I also spoke of. Uh, mm. But that, you know, that's purely strategic from a replacement of plastic perspective. Plastic, fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Bhatia from AUM Advisors. Please go ahead. Just one, one question. Uh, you know, uh, what is the CAPEX plan for Gujarat Borosil for this year? Uh, the main CAPEX is going to come from uh, the new plant, which is going to cost totally 235 crores. No, but I mean, when are the uh, outflow of cash, how will it be? Will it be this year or will it be next year? Almost all of it will be in this year because the plant is supposed to be commissioned by June of, uh, or say early July of next year. So almost all of it will be this year. Some some amount of guarantees and uh, you know bank guarantees from our suppliers and so on will probably go still over. But let's say 90% or so should should happen in this year. I just wanted to understand thing because the whole module will take around 10 to 12 months. Yeah. And then you are not allowed to, you know, use the money which is there at Borosil Glass unless you have given a loan to Gujarat Borosil. Yeah, so we could, we could do that. We could do that. Because now that we have announced the intention of this, we could possibly do that. Gujarat also, also already raised uh, loans, and so they will, they've all, they, and they also have internal accruals. So they will, they started the funding of the project already with, uh, with a combination of loans and internal accruals. But if, if required, uh, we will give a loan, uh, you know, interim loan from Borosil to Gujarat Borosil to fund the project. Given that we've already announced that this uh, this one this cash will be staying with the company. No, because the point was that in, in the, during the preference shares also the last three years uh, the interest was not paid by Gujarat Borosil to Borosil Glassworks because of uh, they you know they did not have the money to repay that amount. So just one check is that if you you know whatever the funding gap could be there. Would it be again in a similar fashion where, because, you know, Borosil Glass as a consumer company will lose the other income on it? So yes. So one, one, the 125 crores, like I already mentioned, will be staying with Borosil Renewables, and that's part of the scheme. Right. So uh, in the short in the short term, it would have to be by way of loan, and I think Gujarat Borosil will service the interest on that loan. Okay, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Janesh Joshi from Prabhuda Srinagar. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the follow-up. Uh, may I know who was the advisor in the current scheme? Uh, Price for our And who was the advisor when we were uh, planning to raise money uh, at the GBL level? Access Capital. Okay. And this uh, reference shares uh, which uh, we had invested in Gujarat Borosil, they stand cancelled, right, because of this particular scheme? They don't stand cancelled yet. They will get cancelled once the scheme is uh, approved and implemented. So whatever money was invested in Gujarat Borosil, that will not come back to uh, the, the consumer franchisee, right? No, it does. It, by way of valuation, it is fully valued in the, in the swap ratio. 
OIC. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. If there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Puneet Garg for the closing comments. Thank you. On behalf of Axis Capital, we would like to thank the management of Borosil Glasswork for giving us this opportunity to host the call and also thank all the participants who joined in. Before we close, I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Kheruka for any closing comments. Over to you, sir. So, uh, thank you all for asking quite a few insightful questions uh, and being a part of this. We are quite bullish and confident about all three of the businesses, namely uh, consumer, scientific, and solar. And uh, the reason we have done this particular scheme is to uh, show that confidence uh, to the market and to various investors that we have that all three businesses will be funded properly and will have to grow on their own in the future. And, uh, you know, I hope that uh, we can execute the plans as, as, as what we have shared. Uh, and, uh, you know, the company will, you know, be growing very aggressively in the next uh, few years. So thank you for your time and uh, see you after quarter one.